Hostage in Counter-Strike is a game mode where the roles are reversed. Instead of terrorists attacking, they need to defend objectives, and the counter-terrorists need to attack. They either need to kill the terrorists or reach a hostage and save him. I am a big fan of Hostage. I much prefer it over Bomb Defusal. I know Hostage maps have a bad reputation of being full of cheaters and maps where people only want to get easy T-side victory, and while those statements are true to an extent, I really think you should give Hostage a second look into. It has a lot of intricacies and nuances that really make it enjoyable to play, on both T and CT sides. I did explain this more in my previous video, but I'm not here to recap that. At the end of said video, I would make a guide on how to play one of my favorite maps in CSGO, Office. And that's what I'm going to do today. Here is the ins and outs of Office. I hope with this guide you will give Office another go, and maybe, just maybe, you could finally see the true beauty this map has to offer. Now this guide is going balls deep into hostage mode in general, and office specific quirks. A bunch of this stuff applies to other hostage maps, however stuff like hostage locations, utility usage, and other nuances will be exclusive to office. I'll be going over what to expect on this map, how to play both sides, and the various tactics you can implement to help achieve a victory, and some basic and intermediate utility usage for both sides. I will, however, start with some basic synopsis of what Hostage is and how to play it. Hostage Game Mode is a mode where the roles are reversed in CSGO. I have obviously said this already. Terrorists need to defend hostages at all costs or murder the counter-terrorists, and the counter-terrorists need to save hostages or kill the terrorists. The main focus of this game is the hostages themselves. The hostages are different from older Counter-Strike games. Rather than an AI hostage that puppy follows the CTs, the hostages are badly beaten up and weak entities the players need to interact with. They are people who are tied down and hurt so badly they cannot move on their own. The only way they can move is if the counter-terrorists sling them onto their backs and haul them away safely to the rescue zone. This being of course added so you don't get unfairly cheated out of an NPC glitching out when it's supposed to follow you. Now, some basic information on the hostages you will need to know on both sides of the match. Hostages cannot be killed. Instead of being able to kill one hostage in order to provide better security on the last hostage, anyone who hurts the hostage will suffer a money penalty. This varies on what you hurt the hostage with. Pelting a hostage with a flashbang will give you a minor penalty. Meanwhile, an op shot, molotov, or stab wound would punish you greatly. CSGO is all about the financial game, and hurting hostages can cripple a player for one, two, or even three rounds if you hurt it enough. Another thing to note about hostages is that the terrorists cannot pick up the hostages themselves and they cannot be interacted at all. Hostages are put in predetermined locations where players load into the server and they cannot be moved by terrorists whatsoever. Only counter-terrorists can move hostages. Hostages also have a default 4 second pickup time. This is the same amount of time it takes to plant the bomb as a terrorist in bomb defusal. However, this process can be sped up by a hostage kit. The hostage kit, the same price as a bomb kit, will vastly improve hostage pickup times to about 1 second instead of 4. This is something great to know because of the next couple things I'm going to mention about hostages. When a counter-terrorist picks up a hostage, the entire CT team is awarded with a monetary prize of $600 each, and the CT who picks up the hostage will get an additional $300 along with the $600. So, it is in your best interest to pick up hostages. Also, hostages when picked up will award the CTs with one extra minute of playtime, which is important, because if the time runs out, the surviving counter-terrors will not earn a loss bonus, and the T's will win the round. However, you will only be able to earn one extra minute per round, and only off of one hostage. And once you are done with a hostage, you are stuck carrying him. The only way you can drop a hostage if you are killed, or if you save him. Hostages who were dropped by C2s who were killed, regardless of how fast it took previously to pick them up, will only take one second to re-pick up by a surviving counter-terrorist. A final thing to note about hostages is that if picked up after the round timer has expired, your team will not earn the $600 bonus. Only the person who picked up the hostage will earn a personal $300 bonus. And that's it. It's not much, but it does help. Now that the basics of Hostage has been properly explained, time to talk about playing on both sides of Office. We will start with the terrorist side because terrorist is seen as the easier side, however, in reality, it is arguably more important role that needs to be played out more smoothly and smartly. But first, we must go over the callouts on this map. I will be referencing these callouts a lot in this guide. 
And if you cannot follow along with these callouts, then you are going to struggle with this guide and on playing office. I'm going to use the most common names for each spot, and some spots may be called different things based on locations, regions, countries, etc. For example, bathrooms is called connector in a lot of European countries, and connector and Z are very interchangeable. We will start out in CT Spawn, also called Garage. Garage covers from the garage door, the door that can be motion activated all the way to the edge of the rescue zone, out into Courtyard. Courtyard is out where the front of Sniper's Nest is. Sniper's Nest is called that because you can get the cross if terrorists decide to rush into Garage Yard at the beginning of the round, and both T's and CT's can try to get an early round pick. Also looking into Courtyard is Security, which is easily accessible right from the beginning of the round for CTs. Over here is Red Ladder, where CTs will use to climb in front offices or offices. Connected to offices is Snowman, a place where this cute little snowman resides every round. Connecting Snowman and Courtyard is Green Dumpster, where, you guessed it, it's where the green dumpsters on this map reside. However, don't forget the Courtyard Dumpsters are here as well. Going into the office complex here is the front stairs, 523 stairs, or main stairs. These are very synoptic and can be used interchange usually. Looking into main hall from courtyard dumpster is main or triple windows, whichever you prefer to call this as well. Now here we are at main hall, fountain, or elevators. While these can be called whatever you want of the three, it's preferable to call the location based on where you see the enemy. If they are close to the elevator shaft, it's elevator. If they are at the entrance of elbow, it's usually called fountain. And if they're a bit more passive, they're main. However, these are also very interchangeably. Going back to tipped or soda machine is where we'll see a tipped over vending machine. And facing that is cubby, a sneaky spot indeed. Going into that would be front hall or side couch. Another personal preference on whichever you prefer to call it there. And to our right would be bathrooms, self-explanatory. Now going left is long hall or long. This mostly is a poor cover choice of vending where at least you'll see a ballsy T pushed out trying to get a nasty pick off of you. And the left and right sides of long are called there if there's a sniper or a T at the either side. Entering from long hall would be side hall. The only things of note here are the front chair, back chair, and plant. And that's it for the side hall. Entering T-spawn now, we arrive to many locations inside of where most of the action will take place. In the corner over there is what you'd expect to be called Gay Corner, self-explanatory. Over here is Z, or Connector, whichever you prefer, and close to T-spawn and Z would be Computers. In front of the Computers would be Blue Couch, another very self-explanatory spot. Now this doorway between Computers and Blue Couch will be called Projector Door. The door that leads into, you guessed it, conference. Now why is it called projector door, you may ask? Well, there is a spot in here called projector. Yeah, another self-explanatory spot. In the back of conference is conference table, and moving into the next room is kitchen. After moving through here, we enter paper because there's a load of fucking paper in this room. Entering into elbow and back into main, we go back to garage windows and tuck. We go down to the garage dumpster to this spot. This fucking faggot who always sits in the exact same spot every round. This piece of shit, low life pencil neck geek who always baits his team while he sits here sucking his own dick until they die. This fucking spot right here is nasty. It's cheap. It's dirty. But I am not going to say this spot's name. I do not want to give this fucker any publicity. This one player who plays nothing but office sits here every fucking round jacking off. If you know what this spot's called, then you play office and you're a regular Joe. But you and you're on the inside of, you know, our little clique. But I personally will not call it by its spot. If you are watching this, whoever this is fucking named after, fuck you. No one likes you, and even the people you play with do not like you one bit. We know you play with cheating fucks and we are sick of it. Be a man and actually play the fucking game without baiting randoms and using your cheating sack of shit friends as a crutch. Ugh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, that was very, very cathartic. I, I needed to get that out of my system. <clears throat> 
Anyway, moseying on back up from garage windows, take a look at cutout and garage dumps as well. We're heading to garage stairs and go down to where the garage door is and back to where we started. Yippee! Now, finally, on to talking about Teesside. You might think you have the advantage if you start the game as terrorists. However, you do not want to start out playing on the terrorist side first. You really do not. While terrorists have the advantage of guarding hostages at the beginning of the game, you have to play a very tight and strict game from the start. The CTs have a lot of room to work with on their half. The Ts do not. Synth Office is a very T-sided map. If a team of terrorists is dedicated and willing enough, they can play the game so painstakingly sweaty, try-hard, and tight asshole, they can get 15-0 on the CTs. And since you need 16 wins to win the game, you can be total A's if you cannot crack into the terrorist defenses. The TLDR of what I said is, the CTs have leeway when it comes to making mistakes, the T's usually do not. However, just because you start on T doesn't mean you should quit right off the bat. T-Side has the mental game factor behind it. If you can demoralize your enemy with a complete lockdown wipe of say 12 to 3, 14 to 1, or even a perfect 15-0, perfect you can make the CT start fighting between themselves, watch them struggle to win and just fall apart. But no matter if you start on T or CT first, you are playing Counter-Strike, and you are here to give it your all no matter what. And if you're not, then why the fuck are you watching this? Or kill yourself, especially if you're on my team who always fucking throws. I always don't want to queue with a random, but we always have four out of five people. <laughs> How you will play the T side is entirely based on where your hostage locations are. There are nine possible hostage locations on the map. One hostage can be in papers, kitchen, or three different locations in conference. A second hostage can be put in long, two different spots in T spawn, or in computers. Now in a game of hostage, there cannot be a hostage put in very similar locations like the game spawning two hostages in T-Spawn. They are fleshed out in order to help the CTs have a better time getting them. As I just said, where the hostages are will entirely depend on how you will play. If the hostages are deep, then there are certain areas you do not need to hold. For example, if you have a hostage in conference in T-Spawn, you do not need to hold long haul and you don't even have to hold paper if need be. However, if a hostage is long, you NEED to have people guarding long. Same with paper. You need a paper hold if you have such a hostage. If you are a T, you DO NOT want a long or paper hostage because they are the easiest to grab as a CT. Lord help you if you have both a papers and a long hostage. However, if you have a quote unquote BAD hostage, then there is a silver lining to this. If you start on T side, you do not need to fret as much if you lose some rounds because once the half is over, then the enemy team will need to defend an awful hostage just like you. And that can help you win the game. Now, a good plan when playing as T is to follow the basic outline of where you need to defend and adjust accordingly. The usual five man strat for playing as T is to have one guy paper, one guy conference, two guys computer slash elbow slash Z, and one guy holding T spawn. This plan can be flushed out based on where the hostages are. For example, a paper hostage may warrant having two players hold paper, and the same with long. Hell, long can be so bad at times that you may need to have three players in it. Yeah, long hostages are that fucking bad. Now, if you do what you really should do, which is hunkering down and guarding the hostages like I said, you can have a very strong grip into your territory. You can give the CTs a run for their money with you trading them and making them crack. However, you don't need to play hardcore defensive. Well, personally, I don't recommend this. You can go on the offense as T's. A good defense is a good offense, as they always say. Now, properly pushing can have some benefits. Depending on how far and aggressive the T or T's will go, it can lead to an early round pick, precious time wasted, map control, and paranoia within the CT team. That is, if you are good at attacking and good at killing fast in 1v1s. There are mainly three types of aggressive plays you can do as a T. Go for a quick peek, eco slash save, bum rush, or pistol around aggression, and lone wolf pushing. Each of these have pros and cons that I will explain. Quick peeks are usually done by the marksmen of your team, and usually done at the beginning of the round. 
Often done at either main or long, you would try to kill or severely wound a CT with a rifle shot. This can be effective to put you at early advantage in order to help win the round. The downside to this is that the CTs can also prepare and counter this. It's essentially going for a mid-pick on Dust 2, but on Office. It's a toss-up, and it can pay off or punish greatly. Also, you can lose a weapon for your fellow T to use, or even worse, give the enemy a free gun to use. However, this is the least risky of the three main types of aggressive pushes. Another type of aggressive attack is pistol round slash bum rush tactics. This is usually done to either intimidate the enemy with close range encounters, and since CT weapons are based on deciding on when to pick fights, this can cause mass panic in the CT team. On pistol round, it can be a toss-up because the T's will have the disadvantage of cover most of the time when pushing. However, if they can swarm the enemy, then they can devour them like fucking chum in the water. Similar to a pistol round, eco pushes are a great way to give a save round out of the way. If the T's are hurting economically, a good strat is to five-man rush something with pistols. Let me be clear on this. Do not expect to win an eco push round. You are mainly here to do two things on this round, cause economic damage to the enemy and take their guns. If you can cause a turnabout with an eco push, take their guns and gain map control, then that is the bonus to what your mission was. But by all means, try to win, but don't expect it 100% of the time. You are mainly trying to harm the enemy with them by making them rebuy their goodies and getting the round over with before they can get hostages for extra money. That is it. Play smart and get ready for the next round. Finally, the third way of being aggressive is by one man arming a push. This is typically done by players who feel like they need a frag hunt or a person not contributing to the team or they think this will throw a wrench in the CT's plans, so they're gonna get out there and kill some pigs. While this can work, I highly recommend against this type of playstyle. The main drawback is that it's typically expected that a single man pushing every round can be countered very easily. On top of that, you can give the CTs a free gun, and especially if they're saving, that's some t that is something you do not want to happen. However, it can work. Some players can pull it off, others can't, and I am usually the person who can't. That's why I personally don't recommend pushing, especially by yourself. However, if the time comes where you need to commit to a cavalry charge, you have to do it together. We win together, we lose together, we die together. Lastly, before I move on to how to play on the CT side, I want to discuss weapons. Since this is hostage mode, a lot of normally untouched weapons become genuine, viable options in hostage. One of the most popular choices is the sawed-off. The sawed-off is a beast of a shotgun, but outside of pretty much knifing range, it sucks. However, with its bottom-of-the-barrel price tag, $900 kill reward, and decent armor penetration, it becomes quite an angle eater. If you were on a force round, it is a wonderful weapon. And then a Gev also becomes viable. With 150 round belt carriers and 300 in reserve, it can truly lay down the law with suppression and area denial. Just be careful when you shoot it through smokes and when you need to reload. That can prove to be your downfall. Overall in office, the gun meta is still largely in play. AKs and ops are always viable options. The Krieg becomes absolutely amazing with its sharp end angle holding abilities, and auto snipers do become viable, even if it's not so good on the T side auto, pretty much all weapons are viable. And that is a good thing. Now, on to CT. As mentioned earlier, if you can start on CT, you have a huge advantage. You don't have as much pressure put on you to do well. Depending on hostage locations, you may only need about 3 wins on CT side in order to help secure a victory. However, if the hostages are in bad spots for T's like Paper and Long, you do need to step up your game and try to at least end the half with about 6-8 to eight wins. Since CT's are also flipped on their heads, some mechanics need to be considered. Molotovs are still $600, and your weapons are still going to be more expensive than T weapons. Money management is crucial throughout this half. However, with higher risks comes higher rewards. Depending on how you play your rounds, you can earn a fuck ton of money really fast. If you can get 3-5 to five wins in a row as CT, you will easily earn over $10,000 if you pick up hostages and survive the rounds. This is great, because not only are you hurting your opponent's economy, but you're saving yourselves a rainy day. And this is a great, great thing to do, because you are going to need a lot of rain checks as CTs. 
as CT, you need to coordinate and work with your teammates. This is even more crucial than on T. One bad call, one misplaced piece of crucial utility, or even a bad timing can ruin entire rounds. You need to be on your A game no matter what. And if you are solo queuing office, <laughs> oh, God help you. Ugh. Usually, you would need to decide who's going to be doing what role as CT real early. Who will op, who will be the entry man, who will be the passive aggressive, etc, etc. I cannot stress this enough, good teamwork and communication is crucial as CT. When playing CT, you mainly need to do two things throughout the rounds, clear enemy pushes and play the pick game. At the beginning of the round, the CTs will spawn in random spots in Garage. These spawns are a lot more varied than T-spawn. What you usually should do is play on the side you spawn at. If you spawn closer to Garage Stairs, you head there. If you spawn closer to Courtyard, you head there. If you're at the entrance of Sniper's Nest, go there and try to get a defensive position, clear the push, and call it. Work together and kill those dumbasses who push you into Office, Bathrooms, and Garage. These are very common spots for T's to enter into close quarters to try to get a pick or gain map control. If the T's can get a foothold into the map and control half or more of the map, the CT's are at a huge disadvantage. Once you have cleared the push, or if the T's have two or more brain cells to rub against each other, now you have to play the pick game. This simply is trying to kill the T's through either utilities, catching them with their pants down, or out shooting them when they try to peek and get you into a 1v1. A good rule of thumb is to not push until you are up by at least two men, meaning you should push when you have five CTs alive and they only have three, four if it's alive and they have two, etc, etc. This is a good line to follow, but however, this is not necessary. Now, the CTs move on to hostages. Depending on where the hostages are, this can be easier or harder to do based on what picks you did or didn't get and where the hostages are. Long and paper hostages are easier to get for obvious reasons, and the deeper the hostage is, the more careful you need to be. Utilities are also mandatory when you pick up hostage for extraction. You need to know what piece of utility to use and where. I will be explaining in detail the importance of utilities in a bit for both sides once I'm done with the CT section of this guide. However, in general, for CT, utility boils down to this. You use flashbangs to breach and enter new areas, preferably actually flashing the enemy, Grenades are used to kill weakened enemies behind corners or soften them up. Molotovs are used to cause mass panic within a room or an area the terrorists are hunkered down in. And smokes are used to help provide cover when moving in and passing through doorways. I know that sounds generic as fuck, like I'm a video game loading screen tip. I know. Trust me. I fucking know. I'm going to go into more depth with utilities and all the extra stuff I couldn't fit into the basics of CTs. But first... Onto the T side first. I described the basics for both T and CT side, and here I am going to show you various bits of information that each side can benefit from, starting with the T side. Here I am going to go into the pros and cons of each hostage location. There are 9 spots total, so I'll make each spot short and sweet. Long hostage. There is really no good pros to having a long hostage. It spreads the T defense rather thin, and it's the easiest hostage for CTs to grab. The only arguable pro is that if you start on the T side first half, you have leeway onto CT rounds, and they will be a little bit easier to win. T spawn hostage. Pros of a T spawn hostage is that the CTs need to cross deep into T spawn in order to get it. Duh. A gate corner hostage can be shot at easier by defending T's, but this also means that the CTs will more than likely get spammed through smoke and killed. A gate corner hostage is arguably the best hostage to have. A T-spawn plant hostage is easier to hold if you have a player in Z, since he won't be too exposed, but the CTs will be better covered when trying to save him. Computer hostage. This hostage is the easiest to defend from conference, T-spawn, and elbow players. Also, CTs will usually have to crawl onto the tables of computers to get him out. Negatives of a computer hostage is that you're essentially putting your hostage eggs in one basket, making it easier for elbow compromises to extract hostages. Proper Molotov and smoke uses can make it almost impossible to stop a computer hostage from being taken. Also, paper compromises can make T players easily crimped into kitchen and conference. Common spots for CT utility are going to be in our next spot known as paper. 
Paper is pretty much a Diet Coke version of Long, where it is the second worst spot to have. Mainly because paper is the most common spot for CTs to flood their utilities in. Nades, smokes, flashbangs, and mollies all will come into paper. Paper also has very few options for cover in there. A well-placed piece of utility can mess up a paper hold. The pros of a paper hostage is that you do get leeway with a paper hostage as T side first. And this is the only hostage where CTs cannot get behind them to pick them up. They must have their backs exposed to enemy gunfire when picking up hostages from paper. Kitchen hostages. They're also kind of like a Diet Coke version of a paper hostage. Like the Diet Diet Coke version of a long hostage. While not a bad hostage, it's not great either. You can guard a kitchen hostage from conference, but it's not easy. However, two people in papers and kitchen can still give CTs hell when trying to save either a papers or kitchen conference. Conference hostages. The best hostages for that side of the map. There are three possible spots for the hostage to be in, and while all are good, the best in the entire game is in the very back. The only arguably negative to the back hostage is that both CTs and Ts with sniper rifles can aim at each other, but aside from that, you must strive for a bad conference hostage. It is, honest to God, the best hostage to have there in office. Now, onto some T-side helps to help you win. Did you know that there is a game-breaking bug when it comes to CTs rescuing hostages? Yes, sir. For some reason, when you pick up a hostage through smoke, there's about a two-second glitch where you can see the outline of the picked-up hostage through the smoke. If a CT tries to run past a doorway, say like long, he can get spammed through the smoke and can lead to a dropped hostage. I don't know why this happens, but this happens a lot. It would be nice if this bug was fixed. I hope this video does shine some light on this issue. Tees can use certain hostage positions as fire traps. Say it's the first or last round of the half. If you buy a Molotov, you can burn the hostage. And if you don't have any money, then by all means use the Molotov as a trap. Most CTs don't buy kits on the first round, unlike me, because I'm a fucking complete retard. If you can hear them picking up hostages, throw fire onto them. If they don't haul ass right away when it happens, it can usually lead to a free kill, and it didn't cost anything. Once hostages are picked up, they cannot take away money from you if shot. This can be used to spray more liberally with rifles or use utility. If you happen to push as a T, it is smarter to go long. You have cover, and you don't alert the CTs into you crossing in the enemy lines. Even if you smoke the cross, it's usually a red flag for the CTs that something is up. The key to winning as T is utility. All utility is important. Smoke's main and side hall are very important. They can delay a push by up to 20 seconds. Similar with Molotovs, they can delay a push by about 8 to 10 seconds, really. You want to delay the CTs as much as possible. If they get low on time, they're more likely to make mistakes and trying to fumble over themselves in order to get a hostage. Here are a few tricks you can use with utility to turn the tide. Starting off with nades, it's always a good idea to nade main and garage windows. Preferably garage windows about 10 seconds into the round. Players like to hang back there and spam through smoke to try and get a dirty pick. This can deal about 10 to 60 damage if the nade is thrown properly making the CTs very squishy when it comes to pushing. Nading main about 20 seconds or so into the round is also very great. Often you can deal 30 to 70 damage to players, and nade stacking can certainly lead to sweet, sweet picks. Paper players are great for nading main. Just be careful if the enemy is prone to shooting through smoke and can bite you in the ass, or if they like to push through smoke. If the enemy smokes off paper and you have a nade, Throw it at the paper doors, especially if you hear footsteps. This can soften up three to five people trying to push and will definitely make the difference. If you are rushing long on a pistol rush, a great thing to nade stack is main stairs. As soon as you cross to see main stairs, throw your nade all down that stairs. More than enough, you can lead to being able to dink a player and easily kill them with a pistol because they'll have about half health if they eat a grenade. On to smokes. Smokes are the working horse of your utility. You need smokes to be calculated and smart. Smokes block sightlines for about 20 seconds, and smokes main and long mean all the difference. 
A good strat is, if you're rushing long, smoke off offices, and, if someone is brave enough, peek main to smoke off triple windows, letting the T's get more and more map control. There is also a few new neat ways you can safely throw your smokes main. Lining up your geometry and practicing is the best way to go about to throw this. Flashbangs are wild cards. If used well, flashbangs can easily get you picks for your team. Used poorly, then you're gonna get your team killed and your stupid ass vote kicked. Flashes can help stop pushes and disorient the enemy in many ways. For example, a good pop flash for main and Z is to line it up in like this in paper, do a run throw, and bang. Nasty flash for the baddies. Finally, we are on to the CT side now. This is going to be more heavily utility based because the CTs need to use all their equipment more smartly and efficiently than even the Ts. Messed up, isn't it? Here I will show a few of my own tricks. Yep, giving up some big B secrets for you fuckers to use against me when I'm playing office. I can't wait. Starting with flashes. Here is a very common but good early flash if you're going garage side. Throw the flash against the side of the wall here and will pop flash into stairs, flashing the enemy for an easy kill. This is a common flash to throw, and people who play offers a lot will be very aware of this, so be careful. Another flash you can throw that's very common but still effective is to line up like this at the fire extinguisher and aim at the top black line of the lamp here and do a simple throw. This will blind papers really well. While still common, it works much better than the garage stairs flash works wonders. This can also be done as well with a smoke. A safe way to smoke off papers without having to peek a potential gun barrel. Now on to smokes. Smokes are the most important part of the CT's kit. Without them, you are fucked on office. These fuckers help you win no matter what. And here I will show you a few examples. Smoking off elbow is never a bad call. It makes getting picked harder and lets your CTs try to crack into paper if need be. Just don't throw it if you're trying to push into elbow. That can fuck up everything fast. Long is crucial to smoke off, especially if you have a long hostage to rescue. Stand close to the beginning of the long haul and do a running throw about here. It will bounce into the doorway, letting you cross relatively safely to try and get a hostage. Another good smoke to throw is that E of the corner of long. This will let you smoke off computers, a very common spot for T's to peek at when you try to get into their spawn. Be careful with the smoke though. Sometimes the smoke won't cover the edges fully, and it can leave gaps, making your amazing, amazing god tier smoke a one way for your enemy. Ugh. Molotovs. These $600 pieces of equipment are also very crucial as well to your smokes. Think of your smokes as your shield and your fire as your sword. They help flush out enemies to prevent T's from retaking main or other areas if you're trying to save a hostage. Here's a few good ones. Do a running throw into paper is always good. You preferably want a deep throw into paper to properly make the enemy retreat into kitchen. Just watch for some dumbass T to push through elbow and blast you in the back of the head. Burning kitchen is also a good call since the T's can hold onto the top of vending machine and this is a very fucking deep corner as well. A proper molly can flush them out easily. Fire into conference can also help out flush out a camping enemy in the back like the camping fuck that he is, but this is not always reliable and you usually have to peek a sight line. An elbow molly is never bad either. You typically want a deeper molly so some fuck ass in blue couches can't remain there and try to pick you off when you try to crack into elbow. If you can, burn Z as well. It can stop a bitch ass opera from giving you a lobotomy. And, while it's not easy, there are certain ways to burn gay corner as well, even from long. If you can smoke off computers and burn gay corner, this can make cracking into T-spawn almost too easy. A final trick I leave you is to counter burn a hostage. If you have no money and a kit, a good strat is to burn the hostage. This works really well on a long hostage, where terrorists can blend in behind the hostage, the plant, and the chair. This will force the enemy to either stay into the fire and try to kill you, or you flush them out. Then, once they're either dead or they ran back into T-spawn, throw a smoke on that fire and boom, you have an almost too easy hostage to grab. 
Very handy trick indeed. Very, very handy. Nades with CTs are very similar to both CT Molotovs and T nades. Use them to soften up dug in enemies in paper, elbow, and long as you may need. When on a CT eco round, you can nade stack elbow or papers with this and hopefully kill a T with a really cheap pseudo salvage barrage of frags. Also, to follow up a nade stack would be to piss rush into paper or elbow at the very beginning of the round. Most players on T don't expect CTs to push either mid or late into the round, and if you push right at the beginning, you'll often catch them with their pants down, and 5 P250s and 570s going off into their faces won't be able to stop them, unless you guys are just really that bad. And done. I have covered both the basics of Hostage and the map office. I hope this guide helped you when it comes to playing either Hostage or Office, because Hostage really does need love. I think Hostage is such a unique and intricate game mode to see us go, and it doesn't get the praise it really should. But I hope this guide that I typed in 3 hours is enough to hopefully at least let you convince it to give it another try. And yeah, I'm not joking. All of this I have said, and I have typed, I did this in about 3 hours, non-stop. Six and a half pages done in 3 hours. I do not fuck around. I was in the mood to make this guide, and I wanted it done. Imagine my voice after I read off all this in one go, too. <laughs> I also don't want to sound like a tool, but if you did find this guide interesting and you got something out of it, I would really appreciate it if you shared this with your other non-office playing pleb friends. I really do want my e-penis to get bigger when it comes to my office friends and the community members behind it. Do you hear that, 10-4? I really don't want to sound like I'm huffing my own farts, but I'm pretty sure I just made your office guides look like fucking garbage. I hope we can still get along and play, but first, you gotta stop solo queuing, nigga. We're really crushing you. Come on, play with us. You're not that bad. Come on, bud. Play with me and Robust and all my pals. Come on.